Hey guys, welcome to another New World video. In today's video, I wanted to share with you guys something I've been doing lately to make a little bit of coin as well as work on my collection. This in my opinion is by far the best way to make gold with almost no effort in the game right now. And to make it even better, it is perfect for those players who maybe don't have a ton of time to play. So they want something they can do nice and quickly in the short time they have to play. I am of course talking about the acid pools in Brimstone Sands, and I know many others have talked about these, but for me, I have always noticed they leave out a couple of important locations and steps that can greatly increase your profit. Another very important part that many people are missing about acid pools is what exactly can make them the most coin from them. Everyone always focuses on scarabs, which of course are great and will net you a solid daily income from running these. But there is another very important reason to run them, and that is furniture. When Brimstone was launched, a whole bunch of Brimstone specific special furniture was added to the game, much like the furniture you can find specific to Evan Scale or Reekwater. This of course includes a set of 9 non-craftable items called Influential, a set of 9 Mediterranean furniture, 4 of which you can find schematics for, and 5 are non-craftable items that are drops, a full set of 10 white oak furniture that you can find the schematics for, a set of 3 lazulite schematics, a set of 3 amethyst marble non-craftable items, a set of 10 non-craftable walnut furniture, and of course the schematic for the carved statue of Jupiter. Now the reason this is important is because many players, myself among them, feel that the true endgame to any MMO is the vanity items, and the more rare they are, the more we will pay to have them. So that's what makes knowing about these items so important. Many people I've spoken to have gotten these and have them in their storage, or in their homes, and then they sit around saying they struggle to make coin, not knowing the extreme value potential any of these hold because they are so rarely on the market. So check your storage, you might be sitting on a nice nest egg, quite literally if it is a Mediterranean chair. So why are these so rare and valuable? Well, for some crazy reason, AGS, while creating the loot tables, decided to make furniture items wildly difficult to get. And worse, they added all of these new items to the Elite Furniture Loot Table, which of course is only from looting Elite Chests and Brimstone. So in order to get any of these, you will need to be very fortunate. The way it works for these is basically you will need to only be looting Elite Chests and Brimstone, then when you do loot them, you will have a 10% chance of receiving any furniture at all. Then on top of that, you will only have a 0.05% chance of hitting the Elite Furniture Pool, which contains of course 57 total potential items once you do. So it is safe to say these will remain very very rare for a very long time. This is both good and bad. It is always frustrating for items to be overly rare, for good reason, but because they remain so rare, they will also retain a very high value. So that's why I love this run. For an investment of roughly 20 minutes each day, you have almost 35 chances to get one of these pieces for a great payday, or to progress in your own personal collection. Not to mention the sandstone, the brimstone, and all of the other valuables you gather along the way. This route for me is perfect for the game when it is in these sort of down times, when there truly isn't a ton to do, and maybe you're trying other games out. You can do this for very little invested time, so you keep earning while you're on a break. You simply log in for 30 minutes, do this run, post all of the valuables you get on the market, and then log out and play your other game. This route can be expanded upon or run how it is. That's what is the best part. It can be profitable for people who have 3 hours to expand it and hit every chest. Or you can just do the bare minimum if you're short on playtime and still come out equally as well. So first, let's look at the gear. Many content creators have recommended luck gear on this run, and if you like wearing it, by all means. But will it improve anything? Mm, to be honest, not really. Mathematically, the difference it makes is in the decimal places. And in the many, many times I've run this, with or without luck, I have never seen any sort of improvement in the loot. There are many things you can do though, that will make this run smoother. Wearing gear with corruption resistance for example, not ward, resistance, will increase your acid resist the same as padding. You can also put padding in your armor and always be sure to bring incense. Wearing a purifying toast earring, many things can help. It is always a good idea to carry incense though, simply because no matter what gear you choose to wear, this will add a nice buff of an additional 50 acid resist, which is more than enough. Now let's have a look at my route and hopefully you might find a couple of chests you have been missing each day so you can get the most for this route. So for me, I like to start here at the Great Shrine of Thoth. Then I run down and hit this one ancient chest just outside near the mini boss, then immediately head down to the Sopdu Hot Springs. Here you will find 4 elite grave offerings, but don't forget to hit this supply stockpile up here. Then I will continue around the settlement, hitting the glyph chest here at this mini boss skeleton, Satat.
then continue through town and out the west side to the glyph chest here at the Little Scarab Ruins of Kanam. After I've looted that one, I head straight down to the pools of Orcus, where you'll find seven elite grave offerings again to be looted. After which I go to the shrine here, the Shrine of War. From here I teleport to the Worm Sign Obelisk and loot the glyph chest found directly at it as well as the grave offering. Then I head over just across to the other glyph chest you have to jump up to. Then I jump down and head over here to New Thermopylae where I loot the three grave offerings here and the one grave take offering. Now, here to save time, I just die. Then I respawn at the shrine and head directly to the Mercurial Shrine and hit the three elite grave offerings found here in the Baths of Mercury. Then I run to the shrine and head directly to the shrine up here in Hecka's Cauldron and I loot the glyph chest found here, then grab the elite grave offering before heading back to the shrine. After that, I take the shrine to Wakala outpost here, and head to the Acropolis. In the Acropolis, you will find the regular grave offerings all over the place, leading you up to the very top where you will find the glyph chest. But what I notice a lot of people miss here is another elite grave offering acid chest found here also, down behind where the scorpion boss spawns, so be sure to get this one as well. Then, once you're done in here, head back to the shrine and travel to the settlement once again. Then, once at the settlement, head out the west side gate and over to the desert towards Kepri. And here you will find four glyph chests and two grave offerings, as well as one ancient chest and one glyph chest on the run over. And that's the end. A very solid, profitable run that once you get the hang of it, can be done in less than 30 minutes each day. This run will yield things like trophy materials, scarabs, legendary gear, named items, and elite furniture. And of course, the schematics. So doing this run is one of the fastest income generators you can do on a limited time frame. So although we are all of course tired of chess runs, this one shouldn't be skipped. Let me know in the comments if you guys do this run any differently, or if there's anything I could do to squeeze a couple more chests into this run and keep it efficient. Okay guys, well, that's my route. I know others have shared similar before, but I've had so many people asking time and time again when they watch my videos to share mine, so I do hope this helps. And as always guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.